Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be breaking down and implementing a basic targeting system for the flashlight as well as implementing collision and procedural movement and noise for just the idle animation of the flashlight. Before we hop into that I do want to go ahead and look at the changes in the scene. I did go ahead and add a new script. It's a very simple script and all it really contains is a class name for flash point, flashlight point as well as an enum which is the priority. We're going to use this to order the to sort the flashlights as well as select the one with the highest priority. And then also a boolean for has been targeted and a priority which is just of type priority which is the enum that we have here and it just defaults to priority.none now on the cultist prefab we did go ahead and throw one onto the chest marker container with a priority of high so the high priority ones we're going to ignore whether it's been targeted or not and prioritize it over the other ones that way if we've got an ai walking around in an environment that has low priority ones it'll ignore the low priority ones and just focus on the high priority ones but we're going to go ahead and break down how we're going to be doing this via blackboard so we're going to go ahead and dive in that real quick the tracking for the flashlight is going to be broken up into a couple of basic parts we're going to have the general spread as the flashlight moves around in its cone then we are also going to have a targeting system so the flashlight will target objects of interest in the environment and look towards it and finally we're also going to have collisions with walls to make the flashlight up to parity with the actual revolver first off we're going to need to know if we have any targets so we're going to put a whole bunch of objects into a group and then every so often the player is going to check to see if any of the things in that group happen to be in front of it and the objects within this group will be a node that has a priority enum on it so we'll have low medium high that sort of thing with high being enemies and lower ones being things in the environment with a couple of mid-range ones so that that way we can differentiate between things in the environment to make the flashlight focus on certain things and it will also have a boolean on those objects saying if they've been looked at before that way low priority things can just be glanced at once and never really interacted with again so once we have a valid target then all we have to do is go ahead and cache that node for a period of time and that'll be our current flashlight target now we do need to go ahead and get our spread and the spread is going to be calculated exactly like it is for the right hand then we're just going to cache it and we're going to be using that later to blend in and out of the targeting system so once we have the spread we now need to actually have a weight and this will be how much we're looking at the target versus how much we're just defaulting to the normal spread with one being the target and zero just being normal animation but we'll get to that in a second so we're going to have a variable that's called the current left target tracking weight and we're going to be adding to it anytime we have a current target and if we don't have a current target we're going to be subtracting to, from it then we're going to be lerping between these two based off of that value now for this to work we're actually going to have to cache this variable that way when this thing goes null we can still blend out of something back to our normal variable we're just going to cache that into a variable which will be in local space to the camera so that that way we can get it afterwards now we have the flashlight panning through the environment like the revolver but also targeting based off of enemies that it needs to look at it also whenever it targets an enemy we go ahead and set that boolean that says whether it's been seen or not to true now we can take that flashlight's current location and go ahead and run it through the exact same function that we've been using for the revolver and it should work exactly like normal now a note on this we are going to have to make some slight modifications to this specifically passing in as a parameter whether this thing is left or right and this is just because in order to blend in and out of collisions we need to keep keep track of the left and right hand separately. I had hoped to make this entire function completely separate from which hand was actually being calculated, but it doesn't seem like we'll be able to get away with that. So we're just going to have to make it slightly adjustable based off of whether it's the left hand or the right hand. That should be pretty much it. Hopefully this has broken it down a little bit for you. Let's go ahead and dive into code and get that implemented. So we're going to go ahead and get started on the code here. So first off, we're going to add an export category for the flashlight. Then we'll go ahead and be adding two export variables for vector twos. This is going to be the the flashlight delay duration and that's going to be the delay between checking to see if there's a new target and that the flashlight point duration range that's the range that we're actually going to be sitting on a target so the x of each of these is going to be the minimum and the y is going to be the maximum this way we can just pair up the data so that when we use the random function to select a time between those two points we can go ahead and just call the dot x and y of these two vectors now in addition to that we're going to go ahead and create a couple other variables first off we're going to have a float variable called flashlight per priority level additive so every level of the 
priority. So none, low, medium, high. We'll add this to the total duration that it looks at it. That way, high priority ones we look at for just a little bit longer. We're also going to have the flashlight view range. That's going to be the distance from the player that targets will be looked for, as well as the flashlight target move speed. This is going to be the speed we move the actual vector three that it's looking at. This is just going to make sure that if we're hot swapping between multiple targets rapidly, we don't end up with just teleporting. And then the flashlight blend speed. That's how fast we blend into targeting versus just our normal idle animation and also how fast we blend back out. And then last but not least, we're going to have one export for the flashlight field of view clamp. We're going to go ahead and make that a range between 0 and 180 and we're going to set that to 30. Remember that's 30 in radius so it's actually a 60 degree wide cone in front of the player so that's a pretty good cone. Now down here in the non-exports we're going to have to change these tilt weights so we have a tilt weight, tilt offset, and tilt look at vector. We're going to make those right tilt weight and right tilt offset as well as right tilt look at because I realized after the last video that I'm going to go ahead and have to separate them out to left and right. I'd hope to not have to do this but in order to have like the left hand being occluded with the right hand acting normally and vice versa we have to separate them out as separate variables. So we're just going to go ahead and duplicate those and make the left hand ones and then we're also going to go ahead and add in two new variables. One for the tracking weight that's the weight that we're currently blending into the targeting mode versus the idle mode as well as the left hand target position vector and this is going to be in local space of the camera we're just going to use this to blend out of the targeting mode when we're done with it finally we're going to go ahead and add two more variables one will be a flashlight target and that'll be of type flashlight target as well as a flashlight timer and that'll just be the general timer that we're using to make sure we move on to the next target at regular intervals now down here in the physics process we're going to do one check on the is aiming section if we aim down sights we want to go ahead and clear the current flashlight target if that flashlight targets priority is not equal high so we're going to go ahead and say current flashlight target does not equal null and the flashlight target dot priority is less than priority dot high we're just going to go ahead and set that current flashlight target to equal null so that way if you're aiming down sights we're just going to reset it unless it's like an enemy that we're aiming down sights at now we are going to make a subtle change to the adjust to environment we're going to add a boolean here and we're going to call that boolean is right and then we're just going to pass it in here on each of these adjust to environment calls it's just going to define whether we're using the right hand variables up here or the left hand variables up here so for both of these we're just going to set them to is right now down here in the adjust to environment we got to make a slight modification to make this work we're currently calling the current tilt weight as well as the last tilt offset and things like that so we're just going to create those vectors right here we're going to set them to either the right variables or the left variables based off of that boolean that we're passing in so we're going to go ahead and leave all of this the same as we're just updating those variables then down here at the bottom we're just going to push those back to whichever variables they were being used from so we're going to push the tilt weight back to the right tilt weight or the left tilt weight and so on so forth forth with all the other variables depending on whether we're right or left at the moment. So that's all we're going to need to do to, to adjust the environment. Next up we're going to go ahead and create a function called update flashlight target. We're going to call that right after the right hand in the idle mode because remember the aiming mode doesn't is going to ignore the flashlight targeting system. And first off in the update flashlight target function we're going to check to see if the current flashlight target does not equal null and it is not currently in the field of view then we're going to set it to null and set the current flashlight timer to zero. Now for this is in field of view we're going to go have to go ahead and create that function. So let's scroll all the way down here to the bottom. So all it's going to do is take a vector three, which is going to be a global position. Then we're going to take the negative of the basis.z of the camera. So that's the forward vector of the camera. And we're going to use the dot product of it and a vector pointed towards that global position from the camera. So a dot product returns one if the two vectors are aligned perfectly and negative one if they're aligned completely opposite. So first off, we're going to invert that. So we're going to multiply it by negative one. And by multiplying it by negative one, we're going to get a float that is negative one when we're looking straight at the enemy. Next, we're going to add one to it and then divide by two. And this is going to remap that to a range between zero and one, with one completely looking away from the enemy and zero looking directly at the enemy. So we can multiply that by 180 to get our degrees. And then we can return whether that variable, so whatever the angle towards the target from the forward vector of the camera is, is less than the current field of view of the flashlight. And we're just going to pass that Boolean back. And all that's going to do is return true if this global position is in front of the camera camera less than the field of view of the flashlight. So by running this function, we're just going to check to see if it's null or if it's not in the field of view. Next up, we can go ahead and simply subtract from the current flashlight timer delta time. And if the current flashlight timer is greater than zero, we can go ahead and return this function. We won't need it anymore. However, if it is not greater than zero, we need to go ahead and retarget. So first off, we can do this by getting all of the flashlight points. And we're going to create in a new array that we're going to store these flashlight points into. Then we're going to create a for loop. Now for loop will iterate through all of the nodes in, in the array 
array, and in this case, we're going to be using the get tree dot get nodes and group flashlight points. The actual points that I've spread throughout the environment with the flashlight point node on them have on each one a group for flashlight points. We're going to be referencing that here. So for every one of the nodes in that group, we're going to cast it to flashlight point because we're going to assume that it is of that type. And then we're going to check a couple variables. So first off, we're going to check to see if it's null. So all we have to do for that one is to just say if converted target. So that just means it's not null and the target has not been targeted or the target's priority equals high and the target's distance to the camera node is less than the flashlight view range. And finally, we check to see if it is in the field of view. Now, if it's in the field of view, that's the most complicated math here. So we do that last. We always do the easiest stuff first. So check to see if the Boolean has been targeted, check to see if it's priority equals high. If it has been targeted and its priority does not equal high, then we're good to go. We can just keep going. And by putting the hardest things down at the bottom, you're doing the least work work through each step of the way. And if all of that equals true, we're just going to go ahead and throw that into the array of flashlight targets. Now, next up, we're going to create a new random number generator, and we're just going to go ahead and randomize that random number generator using the randomize function as we'll be needing it here in a second. So after that, we're going to go ahead and check to see if the flashlight's target dot size is greater than zero. And if so, we're going to sort that flashlight's target. Now we're using the sort custom function here, and this can be a little bit tricky. So we're going to have to create a new function that is going to sort this array. So let's go ahead and create that down here. So to create a sorting function, you have to have two parameters and they both have to be of type flashlight point in this case for this array. Then we return a Boolean determining whether A should be before B. So all we have to do in this function is determine which side it should be on. So in this case, we're just going to check to see if A's priority is greater than B's priority. And all that's going to do is for every object in the array, it's going to step through them and see if their priority is higher than any other priority. And if it is, it's going to move that towards the top. So by using the sort custom function with this function that we're passing in, it's going to order them descending based off of their priority. And remember, priority is an enum, but an enum is just an integer. So by checking to see if it's higher, we're checking to see if it's farther right on the enum. So none is zero, low is one, medium is two, high is three. Now, next up, we can go ahead and check to see if the first one in the array's priority equals high. And if so, we're going to go ahead and use that one. But if it's not high, then we do want to go ahead and just use a random one. We may come back around to this and make the and make the priority system a little bit more weighted where each priority has a different weight on the randomness. But for now, we're just going to leave it this. We're going to use the RNG rand I range between zero and the flashlight target size minus one. That's just going to get us a random target to look at. Whatever we end up selecting, we're going to assign the current flashlight target to that target. Next, we're going to go ahead and set the Boolean for that flashlight target, whichever one we, whatever one we've selected to has been, we're going to set its Boolean has been targeted to true. And finally, we're going to go ahead and set our timer. So for the timer, first off, we're going to get a random range between the X and Y of the flashlight point duration. So this is just our baseline point duration. And then we're going to add to that the flashlight per priority level additive multiplied by the priority of the current flashlight target. Now, that's pretty much it for that, but we do need to go ahead and handle if we don't have any flashlight targets to look at. So if we don't have any flashlight targets to look at, all we're going to do is set the current flashlight target to null, and we're going to set the flashlight timer to a random range between the delay duration dot X and delay duration dot Y. So this way, it just waits a little while between checks. And that'll be it. So let's go ahead and save that. We're going to scroll right back up here, just below the update flashlight target function in the physics process, and we're going to go ahead and move our hands. So first off, we're going to check to see if the target does not equal null. And if the target does not equal null, we're going to be adding to the current left target tracking weight by using delta multiplied by the flashlight blend speed. And we're going to use the minimum function between that and one to make sure it doesn't go over one. And following that, we're going to go ahead and use our last left hand targeting position vector. And we're going to alert that towards the local space of the global position of the current flashlight target in local space relative to the camera node using delta multiplied by the flashlight target move speed. This is the way the vector that we're pointing at is moving towards whatever the target is by some fairly fast value. And if we don't currently have a flashlight target, we're going to go ahead and start subtracting from the current left target tracking weight using delta multiplied by the flashlight blend speed and using the max function of that in zero to make sure it doesn't go below zero. Now you notice I didn't reset this. This way we can blend back from this towards whatever our idle position is when we don't have a current target. Following this, we can go ahead and set our spread. We're going to set our spread almost identical to what we did up here. Now I did go ahead and add a little bit to the current spread time. So instead of zero and 1000, it's 10 and 1000 and 
710. This way, the flashlight will move in a direction, and just a little while after that, the right hand will also move in that same direction. This is just to make things look a little bit more realistic. Next up, we're going to go ahead and check to see if our tracking weight's currently greater than zero. And if it is, we're simply going to look at that target location using the left hand idle IK container dot look at function and using the camera node dot to global of that look at vector, because remember, it's local to the camera. We're going to add to this vector our current spread, just like we did up here with the left hand. And then we're going to lerp between the current spread, so the baseline idle animation and this new rotation by the current left target tracking weight. This way we blend into it if this does not equal one yet. And finally, if the current left target tracking weight is less than or equal to zero, we're just going to set the rotation to the baseline spread. Next up, we can go ahead and set our global position almost identical to what we did up here. The only difference being that we're using the left hand idle base position as well as the left hand idle IK container. And then for the transform to adjust the environment, we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing as we did up here, but we're passing false instead of true as the is right Boolean. And that should be pretty much it. Let's go ahead and save that and hit play and see how it looks. And if we go ahead and walk over here, you can see it is now tracking a target over there. And if we walk up to a wall, we can see the flashlight now collides with the wall properly, as well as the revolver, and they function independently, so I can shoot the revolver around the wall. And if we go over here, the flashlight tracks the target, and because they are high priority, it won't track the pillar in the background. And then if we look at the pillar, It'll go ahead and track that pillar. And if we look back at the target and try to look back at the pillar, you notice it no longer tracks the pillar because it is now determined that the pillar has already been viewed once, so it won't reacquire that same target. And then also, if we aim down sights, it behaves exactly like it should be. And that's going to be pretty much it for today. As always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have all had a wonderful week. Next week, we're probably going to be working on a couple of quality of life stuff. That's probably going to be camera shake as well as bounce for footsteps. But we'll get to that next week. As always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.